Dalriata was a Gaelic over kingdom that included parts of western Scotland and northeastern Ulster in Ireland, across the North Channel. In the late 6th early 7th century it encompassed roughly what is now Argyll and Lochaber in Scotland and also County Antrim in Ulster. In Argyll it consisted initially of three kindreds. CENE Acutel Loern in North and Mid Argyle, CENE Acutel No Engusa based on Isle and CENE Acutel Na Brain based in Kintyre, a fourth kindred. CENE Acutel Chonch Ride in Isle was seemingly too small to be deemed a major division. By the end of the 7th century another kindred, CENE Acutel Com Gale, had emerged, based in Eastern Argyll. The Lawn and Cowell districts of Argyll take their names from CENE Acutel Lowern and CENE Acutel Comgail respectively, while the Morven district was formerly known as Kinelba Dawn, from the CENE Acutel Baaton, a subdivision of the CENE Acutel Lowern. The inhabitants of Dalriata are often referred to as Scots a name originally used by Roman and Greek writers for the Irish who raided Roman Britain. Later it came to refer to Gaelic speakers, whether from Ireland or elsewhere. They are referred herein as Gaels, an unambiguous term, or as Dal Riartans. The kingdom reached its height under Eden Mac Gabrain, but its growth was checked at the Battle of Degsaston in 603 by Ethelfrith of Northumbria. Serious defeats in Ireland and Scotland in the time of Domnall Breck ended Dalriata's Golden Age, and the kingdom became a client of Northumbria, then subject to the Picts. There is disagreement over the fate of the kingdom from the late 8th century onwards. Some scholars have seen no revival of Dalriata after the long period of foreign domination, while others have seen a revival of Dalriata under A.E.D. Find and later Kenneth McAlpin. Some even claim that the kingship of Fortriu was usurped by the Dalriata several generations before McAlpin. The kingdom's independence ended in the Viking Age, as emerged with the lands of the Picts to form the Kingdom of Alba. The name of the kingdom is preserved in the etymology of the Dalradian geological series, a term coined by Archibald Geike because its outcrop has a similar geographical reach to that of the former Dalriata. Name The name Dalriata is derived from Old Irish. Dal, cognate to English Dal and Deal, German Tile, Thile, and Latin Talia and descendants including French Tile and Italian Tagla, means portion, or share, Riata or Riadar is believed to be a personal name. Thus the name refers to Riada's portion of territory in the area, people, land and sea. The modern human landscape of Dalriata differs a great deal from that of the first millennium. Most people today live in settlements far larger than anything known in early times, while some areas, such as Colmartin and many of the islands, such as Isle and Tyree may well have had as many inhabitants as they do today. Many of the small settlements have now disappeared, so that the countryside is far emptier than was formerly the case and many areas which were formerly farmed are now abandoned. Even the physical landscape is not entirely as it was. Sea levels have changed, and the combination of erosion and silting will have considerably altered the shape of the coast in some places. While the natural accumulation of peat and man-made changes from peat cutting has altered inland landscapes, as was normal at the time, subsistence farming was the occupation of most people. Oats and barley were the main cereal crops. Pastoralism was especially important, and transhumance was the practice in many places. Some areas, most notably Isle, were especially fertile, and good grazing would have been available all year round, just as it was in Ireland. Tyree was famed in later times for its oats and barley, while smaller, uninhabited islands were used to keep sheep. The area, until lately, was notable for its inshore fisheries, and for plentiful shellfish. Therefore seafood is likely to have been an important part of the diet. 
The census for N. Alborn lists three main kin groups in Dal Riata in Scotland, with a fourth being added later. The CENE Acute L. Nubrain in Kantaya, supposedly the descendants of Gabran Macdomanget. The CENE Acute L. Noengusa in Isle and Jura, supposedly the descendants of Oengus Mormac Eirc. The CENE Acute L. Loan in Lorne, perhaps also Marlinard and Amerkan, supposedly the descendants of Loan Mac Eirc. The CENE Acute L. Comgale in Cowell and Butte, a later edition, supposedly the descendants of Comgal Macdo Manget. The census does not list any kindreds in Ireland, but does also list an apparently very minor kindred called Senelchonch Ride in Isle, descended from another son of VRC, Fergus Becc. Another kindred, CENE Acute Elba Aiton of Morven, branched off from Senel Leorn about the same time Senel Comgale separated from its parent kindred. The Senel Loern may have been the largest of the three kindreds, as the census reports it being divided further into Senel Chalag, Senel Cath Bath, Senel Nietzsche Dach, Senel Muradag. Among the CENE Acute El Loern it also lists the Ergila. Although whether this should be understood as being Irish settlers or simply another tribe to whom the label was applied is unclear. Bannerman proposes a tie to the Ui Macuais. The meaning of Ergila, hostage givers adds to the uncertainty. Although it must be observed that only one grouping in Ireland was apparently given this name and it is therefore very rare, perhaps supporting the Ui Macuais hypothesis. There is no reason to suppose that this is a complete or accurate list. Among the royal centres in Dal Riata, Dunad appears to have been the most important. It has been partly excavated, and weapons, quern stones and many moulds for the manufacture of jewellery were found in addition to fortifications. Other high-status material included glassware and wine amphorae from Gaul, and in larger quantities than found elsewhere in Britain and Ireland. Lesser centres included Dunolai, seat of the CENE Acute El Loan Kings, and Dunaverti, at the southern end of Kuntaya, in the lands of the CENE Acute El Nubrain. The main royal centre in Ireland appears to have been at Dunseverick. The difficulty of overland travel and the many islands made Dal Riata an archipelago, with travel by sea by far the easiest means of moving any distance. As well as long-distance trade, local trade must also have been significant. Curricks were probably the most common seagoing craft, and on inland waters dugouts and coracles were used. Large timber ships, called longships, perhaps similar to the Viking ships of the same name, are attested to in a variety of sources. Religion and Art no written accounts exist for pre-Christian Dal Riata, and the earliest known records come from the chroniclers of Iona in Irish monasteries. Adomnan's life of St. Columba implies of Christian Dal Riata. Whether this is true cannot be known. The figure of Columba looms large in any history of Christianity in Dal Riata. Adomnan's life, although useful as a record, was not intended to serve as history, but rather as hagiography, because the writing of the lives of the saints in Adomnan's day had not reached the stylized formulas of the High Middle Ages. The life contains a great deal of historically valuable information. It is also a vital linguistic source indicating the distribution of Gaelic and P. Celtic place names in northern Scotland by the end of the 7th century. It famously notes Columba's need for a translator when conversing with an individual on Sky. This evidence of a non-Gaelic language is supported by a sprinkling of P. Celtic place names on the remote mainland opposite the island. Columbus founding Iona within the bounds of Dal Riata ensured that the kingdom would be of great importance in the spread of Christianity in northern Britain, not only to Pictland, but also to Northumbria, via Lindisfarne, to Mercia, and beyond. Although the monastery of Iona belonged to the CENE Acute El Conail of the northern UENE Acute El, and not to Dal Riata, it had close ties to the CENE Acute El Nubrain.
ties which may make the annals less than entirely impartial. If Iona was the greatest religious center in Dal Riata, it was far from unique. Lismore, in the territory of the Cene Acutel Loan, was sufficiently important for the death of its abbots to be recorded with some frequency. Applecross, probably in Pictish territory for most of the period, and Congarthon Butte are also known to have been monastic sites, and many smaller sites, such as Oneg and Tyree, are known from the annals. In Ireland, Armoy was the main ecclesiastical centre in early times, associated with St. Patrick and with St. Olcan, said to have been first bishop at Armoy. An important early centre, Armoy later declined, overshadowed by the monasteries at Muvilla and Banga, as well as their primary spiritual importance. The political significance of religious centres cannot be dismissed. The prestige of being associated with the saintly founder was of no small importance. Monasteries represented a source of wealth as well as prestige. Additionally, the learning and literacy found in monasteries served as useful tools for ambitious kings. The illuminated manuscript Book of Kells was probably at least begun at Iona, although not by Columba as legend has it, as it dates from about 800. Whether it was or not, Iona was certainly important in the formation of insular art, which combined Mediterranean, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic and Pictish elements into a style of which the Book of Kells is a late example. For other arts, a number of sculptures remain to give an impression of Dal Riatan work. The Saint Martin's Cross on Iona is the best preserved high cross probably inspired by Northumbrian freestanding crosses, such as the Ruthwell Cross. Although a similar cross exists in Ireland, the Kildalton Cross on Islay is similar. A sculpted slab at Ardchatin appears to show strong Pictish influences, while the Duplin Cross, it has been argued, shows that influences also moved in the opposite direction. Fine Hiberno-Saxon metalwork such as Penanula brooches is believed to have been created at Dunad. In addition to the monastic sites, a considerable number of churches are attested, not only from archaeological evidence, but also from the evidence of place names. The element kill from Gaelic sill can be shown in many cases to be associated with early churches, such as at Colmartin by Dunad.